I would like to share my research titled Catcall, Card Game to Trigger Conversations About Sexism and Gender Stereotypes. I'm sure many of you have heard these phrases at least once. Boys don't cry, girls should be able to cook, when in reality, everyone should be able to do or not do whatever they want, including crying and expressing their emotions in a healthy way without judgment. These are some things that are commonly said in society. Often, people don't realize how harmful these mindsets can be. Reinforcing what men and women should or shouldn't do limit their opportunities outside of the norm. It happens everywhere to people of all ages, even from early childhood. It's a big problem in the society, but no one seems to talk about it. In 1996, Peter Glick and Susan Fisk came up with ambivalent sexism theory, that sexism is multidimensional. Hostile sexism reflects the negative views of women who challenge traditional gender roles, and the other form, benevolent sexism, reflects the positive views of women who conform to these roles that seem subjectively positive because it promotes a chivalrous attitude of protection and cares towards women, while, in reality, still enforcing male domination. These seemingly positive evaluations imply that women are weak and need to be protected. Women should not deviate from traditional gender roles as mothers and caretakers. In April 2012, Laura Bates initiated the Everyday Sexism Project that became one of this research primary inspirations. It is a website where people share their experiences on daily occurrences of sexism and hope that others who never experienced sexism firsthand would be able to see what is happening in real life. In her book Everyday Sexism, Laura Vave stated that sexism is an invisible problem, albeit the scale. People don't want to acknowledge, to talk about, or to believe that it exists. The people who took this view are not only men, but also women. We came up with the question of, is it possible to encourage people to talk about sexism and gender stereotypes, and how? We conducted an early user study and let people talk about gender stereotypes. A total of 25 participants from seven different countries reflected and wrote their personal experiences about gender stereotypes and shared them within the group. These are some insights gained from the activity. For some people, what classified as a stereotype is not always bad. Some participants agreed that, for example, men should take care of women. This is, hence, reinforcing benevolent sexism. The topic is challenging because no one ever talks about it casually in real life. One feedback said that they realize everyone experienced stereotypes in their life, but again, not many talk about it casually. It is nice to have a conversation about that and realizing that they can relate to others' problem. With that, we explored some media that would be suitable and some related works. While there are many tools to prompt conversations, cards seems to be a popular one. Organizations and companies use cards to prompt discussions for a better product or service. Aside from being used as conversation starters, we can also associate cards with other uses, one of them is games. Over the years, games have evolved to become not only a form of entertainment, but also a powerful learning tool. Game is also an excellent media to communicate and share understanding about social problems because players can experiment and think about possible solutions in a safe setting. In a multiple player environment, they can share opinions and experiences. Based on user study and literature review, we came up with the concept of a conversation tool in the form of a card game that's inclusive, can be used in different situations, flexible, and encourages people to share their experiences on sexism and gender stereotypes. Now onto the design part. We took inspirations from other existing card games, Apple to Apples and Cards Against Humanity. Both are card matching party games with an answer judging system. It's a simple gameplay by matching one category of cards with another category to create funny or interesting combinations. Based on that system, two types of cards were designed, dubbed as Situation Card and Callout Card. The Situation Card consists of conversations happening between a few people or a sentence containing sexist language or gender stereotypes we often see in daily life. Some are explicit, some are more ambiguous. The deck is a mix of hostile and benevolent sexism contents. 
while a call out card is used as an answer to the situation cards. It consists of various responses or actions. A questionnaire was distributed to gather people's experiences on sexism and gender stereotypes. A small number of situations were taken from the EverydaySexism.com website. The amount of sexism towards women in these cards is dominant compared to sexism towards men, which portrays real-life conditions. As with the call-out cards, players can choose between answering the sexist situation in an educational, passive, aggressive, assertive, or humorous way. Since this is a game, we want to implement fun as much as possible. Players have a lot of options to explore, and we incorporate humor into the call-out cards. Players are, are expected to converse through the cards and build empathy with the element of role-playing. The situation card provides sexist situations the player have to face. Then, players are required to act upon that by choosing an answer or action from the provided call-out cards. We want to encourage the players to actively stand up against sexism by actions or words. Call-out cards were pre-made to give the players inspirations on what to say or do when dealing with sexism. When faced with sexist situations, more often, people would not say or do anything. Through this, we want to normalize calling out sexist behaviors. Call-out card acts as a guide and trigger for players to think about ways to call out sexism with the hope that, ultimately, players can creatively come up with answers by themselves. With these two elements, Players will have a base for further conversations and discussion. Here on the left are some examples of situation cards, the cream colored ones. Some of them have more information to give a clear context on the situation. Some are targeted towards women, some towards men, some in the form of benevolent sexism, and some are straight up harassment. On the right, we have examples of the call out cards. They're purple colored with generally shorter sentences or sometimes reactions. The sources for designing the contents for call-out cards are surveys, interviews, personal experiences, and humor for the fun part. Using the concept of card matching game and the content we source, we created a prototype and conducted a user test. We received some great feedback. Participants said that the game was interesting and fun. They suggested multiple environments where the cards can be used. Even if it's not a game, the cards can also be used to prompt discussions within the workshop. They also expressed that it will be better to have an official name and branding. So taking the suggestions, we came up with the name Catcall. It means a loud whistle or a comment of sexual nature usually made by a man to a passing woman. For some people, catcalling is not a big deal. It's just banter, it's a harmless joke, no need to make a fuss out of it. But research shows that harassment like catcalls, whistles, or stares done by strangers result in self-objectification, thus promoting psychological and behavioral problems. It's often brushed off, but the effect is harmful. Sounds very much like sexism. The logo consists of cat elements like whiskers and ears combined with a speech balloon. The speech balloon represents conversations as the game's focus is pairing sentences to make a conversation. It also represents the hope that by playing the game, discussions about sexism and gender stereotype will arise. Another aspect of design and branding is the color palette. We want to incorporate the spirit of women empowerment and gender equality. Thus, we chose the combination of suffragette colors in the UK and the identity of Women's March. The cards were designed to be simple, with text-only content. It was meant to eliminate all biases and to avoid leading the players on. It's up to the player's perception and personal experiences to understand the context of each card. The mood and feeling of the game should be fun, playful, encouraging, open, and non-biased. If you want to normalize conversations of, on sexism and encourage calling it out. Players are free to express their opinion and share experiences. By playing this game, we are creating a safe space to, for players to exercise it. Ramping up the design, we then conducted an user test to see the effectiveness of this game. The way to validate this research is through playing the game within different groups. There were two different conditions for the test. The first one is using the game in a workshop setting with facilitators and a more formal atmosphere. The second one is playing in a casual setting with no facilitator and a more relaxed atmosphere. 
The first user test was conducted in a gender workshop with the Japanese human resource startup. One stated that the cards gave them inspirations of what to say if faced with harassment or sexist situation. The other said that it made them think of what would they do if faced in certain kinds of situation. And it had been a good lesson for them since they never thought about things like sexism and stereotype. The second user test was conducted in an event. The card game had a chance to be showcased in SDJ Game Show for youth and educators. The majority of the visitors were Japanese educators and teachers. One participant said that in real life, calling someone out directly might not be taken well by others. But because it's a game, players can be straightforward. Another interesting comment said that they hesitated a bit while playing because the other players were strangers to them. Some participants expressed their interest in using this card within their community. We had the chance to test out the game in three different environments. The first playtest was done with the members of a university female empowerment club. A lengthy discussion happened after this game. This might be due to their perspective on gender issues are stronger than other people. The next user group consisted of master students from the same program. Overall, the participants said they thought the game was fun and educational. Participants for the third session were all male roommates with a similar age range. After the interview, one of the participants began to tell a story of his own experience with sexual assault. We compiled and analyzed the result of the user test and came up with some insights. We've seen the game in two different situations. Generally, the card game received good feedback and positive reviews. Players in both formal and casual settings said that the game was, first and foremost, fun. The majority liked how simple it was to play, but some expressed their wish in incorporating illustrations on the card or the ability to come up with their own answers. Based on this too, we could see that most people, both men and women, admit that they didn't think about sexism or gender stereotypes in daily life before playing the game. To break it down a little more, within the workshop setting, some people would pick safe answers, fewer jokes, and are more hesitant or shy to express their opinions. A facilitator's role is essential to spark conversations and discussions. Facilitators need to try to encourage people to speak up and share their experiences. Within casual settings, the cards create more conversation and discussions naturally because of the familiarity between participants. With this too, having diverse participants from different backgrounds would benefit the discussion a lot. And since the atmosphere is more lighthearted, participants tend to joke around with each other and would prefer to incorporate as much humor as possible from the cards. Feedback from participants with Asian backgrounds stated that playing the game really made them think about their previous actions and mindset. How sometimes the things they did were unintentionally sexist and biased. Non-Asian players, however, were more surprised by the situation cards and found it unbelievable that sexist stereotypes actually existed. Looking back at the design process, it is true that people from an Asian background submitted most of the experiences that we collected. This was proven to have a high impact on participants from Japan and other Asian countries when playing the game. The game might have to be altered according to nationalities or cultural background to have the best impact. On the other hand, playing the game with participants who are not from the same cultural background can still generate good results. It raises their awareness of gender issues. In conclusion, it's important to talk about sexism and to call out sexist behaviors to reach gender equality. Most people have experienced or witnessed sexism in their life. But sometimes, sexism is internalized in one's culture and people don't even realize that it exists. It is beneficial to communicate social issues as fun and natural as possible. Catcall as a simple, straightforward card game is effective to raise awareness of the player's own biases. There were certain limitations regarding players' cultural background and experiences. The design of the card should cater to the target audience's cultural background, while not all the results are perfect, the cards meet the initial goal of creating conversations about sexism in a fun way. Everyone needs to work together to solve this global problem. This game works as an introduction to the bigger picture of reaching gender equality. Thank you.